Welcome to the CES meeting. Uh, today we're, re uh, we're returning from a TC39 plenary that was last week. So we're going to begin with a summary from Leo on what occurred, uh, followed with a conversation about how to make progress on the Realms proposal before the next meeting. Um, the, and we are expecting Jordan in 20 minutes to join us for that second conversation. So uh, Leo, take it away. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, just a quick summary recap of what we had in the last meeting. We still presented uh, the current Countable Boundary API uh, for Realms, as we discussed before at the SAS meetings. Um, we showed that the path that we went ahead uh, as uh, for the module graph and also uh, the web, uh, the globals that we should be adding. Uh, the path that we are proposing we actually proposed in, in the meeting was to um, keep realms just adding the XMyScript globals and having requirements for uh, the host. If the host add globals, it's still possible to add. We have we presented two uh, requirements that all the globals should be um, configurable. And another requirement to for the global to not have authority, uh, IO access, etc. Uh, some of the discussions from this TC39 uh, meeting uh, raised uh, an interesting part to discuss if we should just remove the second uh, requirement and to just keep the requirement of uh, having only configurable all the all the globals being configurable. So this way is to allow us to do a proper configuration of the each realm instance when we initialize a realm in user. I want, I want to I want to make one clarification. Um, okay. The requirement is not just that the property be configurable; it's that it actually be deletable. Often we assume that the first means the second, but it's that's not necessarily the case. The object invariance require that it's a global is not the not configurable that it not be deleted but if it is configurable an exotic object may still refuse to delete it uh, in this case we actually insist that the that the properties be deletable yeah i can add text like that i just uh, need to proper uh when it when I say a property is actually configurable, I'm just relating to the object description uh, descriptor, and mm -hmm. I, I always understand configurable as like being deletable. Uh, but we can definitely expand uh, the the in, in this text like what it means to be deletable as well, just to make sure like we actually uh, not only being connecting to the configurable as the only way to to make sure something is actually uh, right there needs there needs to be a normative requirement that the property can actually be deleted and configurable by itself does not create that normative requirement. yeah yeah i think we, we should just go, walk away from do even mention configurable just go with uh must be the label uh well i wouldn't not i, I would still mention configurable um because uh uh uh, since we're talking about uh, the the global object in the browser, there's this big confusion about the window versus window proxy. So I would still make it explicit that the pro that the property is configurable, but the but the heart but the the important requirement is that it's deletable. Do we have? Uh, do we know if we have uh, in the spec anything about this? No, like I'm it, might, it might be that that'd be so so clearly this is a case where it should be explicit because often the global object is exotic um but uh that might be a standard that's higher than other properties are already held to so it might be also worth looking into um making sure that other globals are held to the same standard yeah. the mention also, of, what's of the, window the, proxy is also interesting to me because I think I think it might be appropriate to impose a requirement that realms are are not returning proxies, but rather the the underlying objects. Ah, yes, the the that's um, 
Yeah, there's a, the, the current status quo on window proxies in the browser, uh, the, stat, the de facto standards quo is, is actually quite disturbing. Um, uh, wi the window proxies sometimes violate the object invariance in ways that the, some of the browser makers have been grumbling about ever fixing. Right. So, um, so making, making very clear that this is um, not a window proxy, that this is the global object. But, the, but I would still, um, uh, I think it should still be explicit that the properties are deletable. Agreed. So um, one, one thing that, that to mention is that the, I, I believe in the spec today, let me see here, when we create a new realm, the global object is an ordinary object. Is that is what? Is an ordinary object, the global yeah. object is not, a, is not an exotic object. Okay, in that, in that case, uh, configurable might very well normatively imply deletable, uh, but nevertheless, we should be explicit. Let me see, let me double check that, uh, uh, one second. Yeah, that's true. We are in an, op we, the, the realm specification is in a, in a position to make <clears throat> a stronger claim than the incubator realm. In the same text that we make it, uh, the, the, that we make the requirement for configurable, and uh, we can not only add deletable, but we can also set a reminder, like a note, that a global uh, object is still an ordinary object, and we can make this reference there, just as a reminder, like as long as it's an ordinary object, it's still right. Possible. So is it is in uh, in in the uh, in the two sixty two set realm global object if the second argument is undefined, which is in the case of realms, that creates an ordinary object as a global object in step 1b. Okay, great. Yeah, and uh, to continue the report, uh, one of the things that I just want to mention on, uh, um, as Matt to uh, pointed out, is uh, the reason that uh, like people are still showing uh, strong preferences over how this API should be, uh, but most of these preferences are conflicting uh, with some requirements like here and there, most of them like from implementers. One of the things that is very important to uh, note is that in the last TC39 meeting, it seemed like we got a uh, a clear path to advance from the Chrome team, which is big from everything that we've been discussing, everything that we've been presented. I think this is a very nice um, milestone. Like we, we really needed to, to go through that one. And I think Chrome is actually okay um, with this ahead in the current proposed format. We actually just doing a uh, some relaxation of the current requirements, and I think Chrome team, uh, the Chrome team will also be on, on, on board with that. I'm actually going to confirm with everyone involved, implementers, and etc. Um, but uh, just trying to quickly address uh, some strong preferences, as we have like some str strong preference from Jordan Harbor and uh, Jack Works. Um, I still, uh, it's, for me, it still seems like clear that like the, with this API, we can achieve the use cases we are trying to resolve. And uh, uh, the, the, the preference go forward on what is gonna be necessary in user land to pr uh, provide configuration, like setting a, 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 a main brain framework that works with it, setting configuration uh, on the globals that are presented. Uh, so these preferences are actually not really a technical blocker to address the use cases. Like it's still solvable in user land. It might still add a, uh, an extra step here and there, uh, but it's still possible to achieve, uh, to resolve the use cases. So that's why I'm satisfied with the current proposal. And that's why I'm, I'm like willing to continue uh, proposing this current API 
in the next meeting to advance to stage three. I want to add a couple of notes. So I think after the meeting, um, I have a couple of conversations also with some parks, including Dominic. The, it's, it's important, I think it was very important that Mark uh, was able to articulate in the meeting something that we didn't really think before um, around uh, the role of realms in terms of mutations and the foot gun that we were trying to address um, the concern for the foot gun that uh, Crom team has um, uh, um, uh, uh, try, has been trying to address with the content proposal and so on has been about the the identity problems the the cross uh, cross uh, uh, object graph intersection and so on. It has never been about mutations, and the callable boundary is not a boundary for prevent to prevent mutations. Is that's not the role of that of that boundary? The role is to prevent access to objects that are not from your realm and therefore um, eliminate the full gun there that we know is real. Um, and I think having that distinction and making sure that everyone understands that realms are not going to put in place a boundary that prevents mutation of the outer realm is an important distinction. Uh, when you evaluate something and you call it with a, 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 a argument that happens to be a callable, when they call that callable, that callable might produce side effects on the outer realm. Um, there's nothing that we can do to prevent that. Similarly, the import case or dynamic import is the same thing. You're doing a dynamic import. That thing might or might not have observable um, changes on the outer realm, in this case, in the um, module graph and the, 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 the caching of the module graph, which is shared between the two realms. So those things are aligned with the idea that realms, are, realms is not going to put in place a, a boundary for mutations. That's not what we're here. Um, uh, I think that narrative will, will take us a little bit far, far away in terms of discussions around what can the realm do or not. Um, so I hope that, that everyone is on, on the same page on that. Uh, that's my hope as well. And if I can, I think this is as good a time as any to show my very short slide deck on, uh, on this topic. Um, let me share my deck. Is my deck visible to you? I'm yes. I'm calling I'm I, I'm calling this the like the Italian model. <laughs> it's, it's, is that suppose so in the way that the Rome is the city state and empire, um, it, it simultaneously all of these things we sort of talk about JavaScript um, as uh, in in a similar way. TC uh, pardon test two or pardon two six two. Uh, talks about JavaScript in terms of evaluation and function and modules. All of these sort of implicitly fit within a compartment, which is a module loader, a realm, which is a set of intrinsics, a thread, which is a shared memory, and a process, which is uh, which is a separate memory. Um, and we don't have concrete definitions of anything um, above eval function and module, except now we're proposing realm, right? Um, and it is in, it is inherent intrinsic to the design of JavaScript that there's pervasive mutability at its core, and that both means that the that these are monkey patchable um, and shimmable, and progress in the language can be faked before progress in the language is actually realized. And these are really important aspects of the design of the language. Um, and it occurs to this, so. As far as CES is concerned, the, we haven't yet either discussed at, T, at TC39 much about lockdown, which is the process that we intend to propose for converting uh, the process thread realm compartment and evaluations semantics of a particular JavaScript environment into the corresponding semantics in a CES environment. It is currently the case that the CES shim replaces eval function and the uh, and the module loader and in fact provides a compartment before lockdown that is just a module loader and provides no security benefits 
And in the same way that it replaces the function with a contain with a locked down function constructor, it, it needs to replace compartment. And it, by extension, it stands to reason it will need to also replace the realm with a locked down a locked down version of the realm in order to enforce that containment. And a lot of the conversations we've been having about the globals in the realm have been uh, have been informed by a requirement that we as the CES folk have brought to the table that, for example, they not be able to communicate. Um, uh, the, 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 we've we put perhaps an unnecessarily restrictive requirement on realm because we're thinking about realm after lockdown realm that does not have a uh, doesn't have timers doesn't have a, uh, a, a, a random number generator that has observable side effects um, and and furthermore does not allow for the addition of globals that break those constraints i'm proposing that we table that issue until we're talking about uh, the lockdown proposal because the lockdown proposal will be about translating function compartment realm etc into the lockdown version of those semantics, which are more restrictive and are and need to be able to, um, uh, uh, to to enforce additional constraints. So, um, I think, uh, and that's my entire deck. Um, the so, so in in summary, I think that we can uh, come to an agreement that the realm should be. Uh, extensible by browser vendors, provided again that everything is configurable and deletable, uh, because that is necessary in order for lockdown to be able to turn the realm into a locked down realm. Um, and it is necessary also for the realm constructor to be replaced with a lockdown realm constructor. Um, and that's probably the best place to start having conversations about attenuating the realm and limiting its ability. Uh, to escape the containment provided by lockdown. Uh, and that's it. I'm hoping that that, uh, that helps at least uh, get past Jack Works' con uh, concerns, especially uh, because Jack, Jack Works, I think, is proxying concerns from us as CES um, about, about realms as a lockdown realm. Um, and if we can clearly communicate to TC39 that uh, that is a, a conversation we can afford to table. Um, then, uh, th then that should help us make progress on Realm. Uh, Chris, can you put that diagram back up? I want to make. Can you put that diagram back up? I want to make a few points. Uh, yes. Is it visible again? Uh, yes. Uh, so. First of all, I like this diagram a lot. Um, uh, the uh, vertical stacking and the horizontal stacking are actually more similar than different um, in that, um, uh, well, let's take, that, that's actually not the, um, an important hazard in building building lockdown uh, in terms of the configurability of realms, uh, not an insurmountable hazard, and it's in fact what we expect we'll be doing, uh, but is that when you restrict, if you're, yeah, if, you're, if you're building it, if you're shimming lockdown on top of an existing realm standard, on top of the proposed realm standard, then a hazard you have to be very aware of is that if you create a restricted realm, but within that restricted realm, the realm API is exposed, you have to ensure that any restriction that Alice imposes on the Bob realm, that Bob cannot escape those restrictions by creating a new Carol realm that is not subject to those restrictions. So there's this, um, a uh, thing we call inescapable restrictions and restrictions that propagate transitively um, uh, over creating creating new subworlds that are like the restricted world. Uh, when you restrict a world, you have to also uh, transitively propagate those restrictions to worlds created from that world. Um, uh, that's not to argue against anything that's been said. It's just that that's something that we need to remember to be aware of. 
And that some ways of constructing these APIs might make it more or less hazardous to successfully propagate a shimmed restriction in an inescapable manner. Another point I'd like to make about the nesting of concepts here is that <coughs> um, when you create a realm, you necessarily create the start compartment of the realm. Uh, the start compartment meaning the, um, the you know, there's an initial global object uh, and evaluation context for the new realm but that new start, so we call that the start compartment. That start compartment does not have its own uh, compartment instance object because it was not created by saying new compartment. It was created by saying new realm. So the, uh, the realm instance has to also provide um, uh, somehow the functionality that we would expect of a compartment instance with regard to controlling the compartment nature of the start compartment of the new realm. In a similar manner, when you create a new thread, or uh, by the way, I'm assuming thread means agent and process means um, uh, uh, agent cluster. The my intention was to just ape the words, but the, the words and their meanings from operating system terminology instead of inventing anything new, uh, which, right, is, but... which is to say thread corresponds to p-threads, which means shared memory and process means not shared memory. Uh, so that's not, um, that's not a meaningful, that's not directly a meaningful distinction in ECMAScript concepts. Um, uh, I think that the ECMAScript concepts they most naturally map to would be respectively uh, agent and agent cluster. So I'm, I'm just, uh, I'll, I'll just take them as synonymous for now so I can make the, 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 um, uh, the further point that when you create a new thread or agent, that uh, that new thread or agent, you know, for example, something like creating a new worker, that new thread or agent necessarily has an initial realm, a start realm, that necessarily has a start compartment. So there's this interesting feature of the nesting here that for every new outer world that you create, there's the succession of <clears throat> initial instances of each of the inner distinctions as well, um, but which the only instance for controlling it is the instance of the thing that you actually did new on. That was all I had to say. It was just, just in terms of uh, preparing the ground for actually creating a uh, thread API and a process API like we have a Realm API and a compartment API. I forgot to mention also uh, one thing that Dominic uh, highlight or 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 punt on, which is the difference between a, a accidental mutation uh, versus intentional mutation. Um, not necessarily with those terminologies, but basically his arguments. Uh, against the, the the possibility to create mutations or to produce a mutation on the outer realm, uh, a state mutation on the outer realm, um, uh, is that in order for you to create a mutation on the outer realm, the outer realm has to give you something, give, give you some power by giving you a callable. While the usage of import, dynamic import, um, is not something that the outer realm can control. So when you create a realm, you have access to that syntax. Therefore, you can do dynamic import, and the dynamic import produces a mutation on the module map uh, and the cache and the sequence cache and so on on the outer realm, which is 
what they have been complaining about that this mutation is happening. So mm-hmm. that's, that was the um, the foundation of of the discussion that that we have uh, on one of the threads. So I think that's obviously correct. Like yes, in in one case you already have access to make those mutations, and there's no way to take those to take that power. Um, and in the other case, you are intentionally giving them access to produce mutations or to, to make a mutation on, on the outer realm. So that's a yeah. uh, okay, I would say it's okay uh, compromise in the sense that, uh, uh, yes, we're not protecting a mutation. Yes, you can give something to the realm that produce a mutation or, um, or allow you to make a mutation. And yes, by default, the the module map is mutable by the dynamic import uh, in an even regular import in in ways that are really difficult to observe by the outer realm anyways. Yeah, uh, Karidi, this is actually uh, one of the things that uh, I also believe we, if we remove the, the extra requirements uh, from the host hook, when we actually just say like, uh, we just like the, the only requirement is to, to for all the globals to be configurable and deletable um, and removing the uh, other requirements we actually re- remove the parts that we uh... okay uh, sorry I got an update so when we move the requirements there we remove the part where we say uh, we disallow uh, like things with the ca- uh, mutation capabilities. Um, and uh, once again, it's uh, some something that we are bringing like more responsibility to user land, uh, doing a proper configuration as we do today uh, with iframes. Um, I, I didn't quite get what you're saying, Leo. Can you can you explain more? So when Dominic complained about uh, uh, the, the the module graph being mutated by the realm. He was complaining because we had another part in the specs uh, draft where mm-hmm. mutating in the specs draft saying like we should not allow anything else to be added by the host hook that would add uh, that would allow mutation cross round. So yeah, Dominic I-O, I-O. was we comparing authority and IO. Yeah. Uh, and by that, he also understood as, as a mutation. So there is nowhere else in the uh, spec that we plan to have, uh, that we're going to have in the spec saying like it, we are disallowing mutation. So Dominic's complaint was because we once said we are disallowing mutation cross realms. And now, and then he said, oh, the, the, the actual import is allowing mutation. So that's uh, like you're breaking your own contract. But we, okay, now so we don't so have that anymore. So like you're saying that if we, if we remove that wording and we say simply that anything that added by the host must be deletable, um, yeah. um, is sufficient to say we're not in the business of protecting against mutations. Mutations will occur yeah. one way or another. And yes. They might be observable or not, depending on what the user is trying to do with the realm, but we don't care. Yeah. We, we uh, bring in this responsibility to use the land. And like, yes, we rec- as you say, we recognize it like mutations can happen as it can happen with import and use the land should be uh, vigilant in actually doing a proper configuration of the realms as we do today in, in iframes. So uh, Mark, question for you, that you okay with this? Uh, that might be adding fetch to the realms and so on. So um, I, I initially was kicking and screaming, but uh, uh, Chris Chris convinced me with, and his diagram I think really gets it across well, that uh, the reason why I um, was so resistant was because I was really projecting the goals of CES, of a post lockdown world onto realms. And given that, we're, that, you know, that there will be this lockdown uh, operation and there will be this transition from the left side of Chris's diagram to the right side of Chris's diagram. The important thing is that we get to the right side of Chris's diagram uh, and that um, 
things like fetch not only need to be removable, but also need to be uh, emulatable, need to be virtualizable. Um, uh, and I think that, that uh, everything we're doing, we're saying is still consistent with that. When somebody creates a new, re new realm with all these things being deletable, uh, they're also able to, to not just remove things, but they're also able to populate it with an emulation of some other environment. Uh, so the, I think the, the cases to keep in mind is you know, you're on a browser and someone wants to, em to emulate the node environment or your own node and somebody wants to emulate the browser environment. Or of course, you know, any of those things cross em embedded. Um, uh, so the, the host virtualization is part of, so it's not just the security of, of, of lockdown that I'm trying to ensure, it's the uh, faithful virtualizability. Uh, and I think all this is consistent with that. I think okay. that- I'm well, certainly yeah, okay I, with that too. The, um, the, 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 the one thing that, that we need to be careful of with that re relaxation is to ensure that lockdown is shimmable um, and, and to make, and to make it possible to shim realm lockdown, lockdown realms as well. I think that we're covered, but just to talk it through, um, supposing that you are, uh, is, is a, a fly in the ointment is that the dynamic import of a child realm is not deniable. Um, so that the. But I think that that I think that the story remains the same in in the absence of an implementation of compartment being added to this uh, added to the, uh, a specification being created and the implementation being added to a, a, a vendor implementation, we still have to shim both compartment and locked down realm. Um, and I think that that puts us in a position to deny dynamic import as we we already have are in a position to deny dynamic import it's not ideal. Um, but uh, with our emulated module system um, and the censorship that the CES shim does, we can do that. Um, the, 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 then the question is, so, so locking down a realm is a matter of replacing the realm constructor with a new realm constructor that implicitly runs lockdown before running any client code in a child realm, um, such that it denies it the ability to do dynamic import and grants it only ability to communicate uh, through the through the the incubator realm, um, and I think that's satisfying. What do you think, Mark? I think so. Um, uh, an another um, another restriction to to just notice is kind of in the same um, left side of your diagram versus right side of your diagram transition is that post lockdown sloppy evaluation is not possible. And that's through the entire hierarchy of evaluators. It's just you're now in a world in which, in which the concept of sloppy evaluation has been removed from, from uh, it, you know, it's no longer a concept. It's no longer something that, that one can, uh, a way to evaluate anything, uh, even, if you cre even if from the realm you create a new thread or a new process. In the lockdown world, you're creating a strict realm and a strict process. So, I think it, it's it's. Um, uh, I think all of these restrictions go together in one coherent story, uh, since we weren't willing to make the left side, the normal realm API, require strict only. Uh, then uh, all the rest of this so sounds um, you know, in a similar category. Um, it's also interesting that as a constraint on the host emulation is we're not trying to enable the emulation of sloppy hosts uh, because that would require sloppy evaluation. So we're, we're trying to get host virtualizability among hosts that are already in a more disciplined environment, you know, mo more disciplined post lockdown like environment. We want those hosts to be emulate to em be able to emulate each other. They don't have to emulate the pre lockdown environment. Um. 
Um, another thing that I like about this particular route, uh, which is somewhat dangerous, is that uh, that it, it makes it possible to strike a better uh, um, a better compromise between security and performance in some cases. Like for example, um, we like what the 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 true the, the safest option to do for fetch is to virtualize fetch such that anything that is that calls fetch is virtu is virtualized through the parent uh the parent realm right so it would have to so so a request would have to transit the realm to realm boundary and the fetch would have to occur in the parent and then um uh and and, and subject to any attenuation but that comes with a performance penalty that might not be acceptable in all cases and it might be necessary in some cases to compromise and say um, that the lockdown realm API may have um, performance motivated uh, options of its constructor to say, if I did have uh, direct access to fetch, I can bequeath that to my child realm um, for performance reasons. Um, to the extent that that's wise. Um, you had a note about Jordan. Yeah. Um, so when we reached uh, 1030, I text Jordan and uh, saying like, yeah, I hope to see, in the, see you in the meeting. He first told me he didn't have uh, an invite but I, I confirmed I, I had this, like uh, I talked to Jordan on uh, last Wednesday after the meeting in the afternoon. And we, I thought about like having him join us for to discuss this, uh, which I confirmed like I sent the calendar invite. I actually sent the, 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 the SAS meeting uh, invite. I invited his email. Um, if, he told them that if, he had conflicted meetings, uh, so he cannot join us today anymore. Um, and then I checked my calendar again. He, uh, his email doesn't show up there anymore. My work email was not showing up in this calendar invite as well on Monday. I, I, I'll ha I have my personal and my work email. I always had like double, uh, triple checks for assessed meeting. I have like uh, TC39 calendar. I have from my personal email and from my work email. It was not showing there. Jordan uh, didn't have this calendar uh, invite anymore. Yeah, let's try to figure out if he can come next week. Uh, he cannot come next week. I already talked to him. Like I, I just had the answers when I was talking to you. That's why I, I was having like interruptions because I was just receiving the, the news like he's not being, being able to join today. He's off next week. Uh, he can come up. Uh, like the second Wednesday after this. Um, that works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so other people have work email that disappeared from uh, the meeting invites. Like yeah. Well, thanks again for the great conversation today. Thank you.